so that's great, Matt, but, you know, it still feels like we're in two different languages, right? Like, uh, that seems all well and good, but then what is Fong shading about? Well, let's set something up, right? So we're going to do the same thing, and you're going to say, but Matt, I already made it. I'm going to say, I know, I know it's so hard and it's frustrating, but a part of what we're doing is we're practicing, right? Uh, a tremendous amount of the learning that we do uh, is all about repetition and you know for better or for worse frequently what we need to do is we need to practice a thing in order to kind of get the muscle memory of it down in our brains so this time I'm going to add a geo you just saw that I added a rectangle or replaced um, my torus with a rectangle inside I'm going to add a camera this time I'm going to add a light because I do want to do some lighting calculations. And I'm going to render this. That looks similar so far. What's going on? I'm going to go ahead and open up my geometry viewer so I can see what's going on here in my scene a little bit. My light's all the way back there. There's my camera. I'm going to scoot my camera just a little bit closer because I'd like to be able to see this a little bit better. More like that. This time around, we're going to add a Fong material. Fong name shape, namesake comes from the uh, kind of computation, right? Fong shading. If you were to do like a little quick Wikipedia search, you would actually see on the internets, on the interwebs, uh, you know, instead of just being full of cats, it's also full here of Wikipedia articles as well. Right, so Fong shading is actually a kind of uh, shading that's done computationally. Right, there's a Fong reflection model. This is the namesake of the material, right? That's great. Whoa. So there we've got this set up. Let's do the same thing we did before. Let's add a movie file in. So we're going to get a texture in here. Let's actually, you know, maybe we're going to pick that same gentle texture that showed up. We're going to attach it to a null, our favorite thing. We'll apply that to our color map attribute. We'll scoot it over here. We should see probably pretty close to right away. Oh, no, that's looking pretty good so far. I like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, okay, cool. That looks great. Let's head here to our light. And let's change a few parameters on our light, because that's one of the ways that we're going to most easily kind of understand some of the differences here and what's going on. Let's head over to the light page. We're going to change this from being a point light to being a cone light. Right? One of the things that we did is we played with the fact that we could manipulate how our light worked a fair bit. And so we could start to actually get an awful lot of effect out of our light. So here we can see I've kind of made a little spotlight out of this thing. I am going to move this like little spotlight situation much closer. I don't want it to be quite so far away. I'm going to put it in. Let's see here. I want some top light. I might move it back to like 3, for example. I might translate it up to something like 3. Whoa, that's... Mm. That's all right. Let's come down to maybe like two. And let's we'll come in a little bit more. Let's come into two. And now we've got to rotate it, right? We've got to change the rotation. Right? We can see how this rotates. And I think we want to rotate, oops, and X. So we'll rotate this down a little bit. Right? We can start to see what's going on here. Let's turn up our cone angle a little bit. Let's get a slightly bigger delta and we could soften that edge just a little bit more with a nicer roll off so here we can see that this lighting model that we're using now right this this fong shading is actually changing the way that we're working with this particular material um and so there's a a kind of difference that's inherent in the way that this works you know, it's important, I think, to kind of understand a portion of this because it makes a huge difference in the way that we actually work with these things and the way that we start to think about them.
Let's, while we're at it out of here, let's translate this over a little bit. Maybe we want it just kind of like over to this side. So let's go back to our light. Let's turn down the angle a little bit. Right, this is like, it's, it's really easy to fall into the trap of being able to play this game an awful lot. And let's you know, change the angle of this a little bit. And I want a little bit uh, more delta. Yeah, 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 yeah. There we go, there we go. Okay. Now, I've already got one light kind of set up here. I'm just going to do a copy-paste of that light. Oh, we can see that it got brighter right away. On my second light, I'm going to go ahead and translate. If this is at negative 4, I'm going to get rid of that negative. I'm just going to put it over at 4. Right? So now we can begin to see, like, oh, there really is some exciting stuff going on here. We might even decide that in our light color, maybe we want to, you know, shift the hue of this down into the blues. Maybe we want to give this, like, a nice soft blue color. Right, we'll kind of cool it off over here on the left-hand side. We can see how that's being applied. Now, I don't need to look necessarily over here at all this. We might instead decide to view our output here in a slightly bigger way. And in fact, why don't we just put it in the background? There we go. So that's, all right, that's interesting. Well, what if we come over to our other light? and we change its lighting color, and maybe we want it to be like a little bit warmer, right? So now we've got kind of some warm light going on here. This is part of the fun of what, how we can start to think about how shading and lighting works here inside of Touch Designer, is that we have our uh, kind of options to play with all these parameters. Now it's important to remember this is gonna, of course, change the look of the content that you've made, right? But maybe what uh, this means is that you're going to play with this kind of virtual lighting experiment instead of maybe uh, thinking about how you do that here in your texture, right? If I wanted to think about a similar kind of effect over here in my constant shading, I might have to do something instead like, hmm, I need a circle top. I need to composite that. So maybe we composite these two together. I want this to be input one. It's going to hold the shape of this thing. Probably don't want it to multiply. Probably want something more like overlay, maybe. And I want to crank up the softness of my edge. I probably want to change this transform to be native resolution, which means I'd need this to be slightly larger. It might be easier for me to think of this in the same dimensions, 1280 by 720. I'm going to turn my circle down here. If I want that oval shape, right, I kind of have to play with this business. And then I need to change the color, so maybe I want this to be more, oh, it's too blue. Mm, that's some blue. I could, like, play with the alpha here a little bit. I have to translate this over. Right, like, you get the idea. This kind of effect is different. Right, of course, I have to connect it in here as well. So this is a different approach than doing it here in this kind of shading approach with our lighting. Right? It's not to say that one is right and the other is wrong, but just to point out that there are different ways to tackle some of these kind of interesting and complex problems that we might encounter as we start to think about them. All right, so that's kind of the essential ingredients for how we think about a bunch of this stuff. The last thing I would uh, encourage us to think about maybe is this. Let's remember that we could also do something like add an LFO. So we've got a little bit of movement here. Let's add a math chop to the works. And I might want two math chops. So I'm going to change this, right? Let's take a quick look at what's going on here. Remember, this is at not 0.4. So let's say that we want the range of negative 1 to 1 to represent not 0.4. Oops. Not 0.4 to 0.4. And let's reset that. Okay. That's pretty good. I'm going to get rid of the other math chop. I'm going to copy and paste this one since I already did it. And now I'm going to flop the signs here. 
So I want, in this case, one's going to go from negative 0 0.4 to positive 0 0.4, and the other one's going to go from positive 0 0.4 to neg negative 0 0.4, right? If we were to merge these together, if, it, if you're having a hard time kind of conceptualizing what some of the shapes of these things sometimes are, a trail chop can be a great way to kind of understand that. Right, so that's the shape of this curve. So what if we were to take that, let's apply a null, and let's use that to describe what the translation parameter is of one of our lights. And let's use this other one to describe the translation parameter of our, our, our other light. Right, we've got this like crisscross animation happening now. And we might turn down the frequency. Maybe that's a little too low. Right, so now we've got a little bit of animation in our lighting, which is of course changing the way that this thing behaves. And we have a moment right in the middle when we have almost white light um, that gives another effect. So again, you know, we can animate any number of things. We can, we can do all sorts of really fun and exciting things here inside of Touch Designer. And a part of the challenge is to think about, well, what is it that we want to do? And what's the kind of effect that we want to create? And at the end of the day, that's one of the things that's really important is to not only kind of understand how to play in this space, but to start to think about, well, what is it that I actually want to design, right? The essential part of what we're doing uh, ultimately and learning how to work with this environment as we're learning how to design computation like we're learning how to design something in a very different way because we're not necessarily thinking about what this means for we're going to then render this out and play it with some other application we're starting to think about how can i design something that's going to be interactive or immersive or responsive because at the end of the day that's really where we start to shine here is that we build something that can then adjust and play and move with us instead of being a fixed piece of content that only behaves in one particular way. All right, we'll keep going with some more rendering and exciting stuff another time, but this helps us kind of uh, think about how shading and rendering, especially the inset essential ingredients of all of those things work, especially here inside of Touch Designer. All right. Hang on, hang tight, and we will keep working.